to our Abuja studio. Standing by with me is Mr. Emmanuel Anene, who is a legal practitioner, and we're going to delve into the issues surrounding uh, the recent sack of the former boss of the Department of State Security, Mr. Lawal Daura, and of course, the uh, invasion of the National Assembly. You're very welcome to the program, sir. Thank you for having me, and good morning, Nigerians. Let me start from, from the first question, the first issue, which is, uh, what are your thoughts on the decision of the acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, to sack the former di director general of the Department of State Security, Lawal Daura? Well, let's take issues in proper perspective. What is the intent of the DSSS? by besieging the National Assembly. That was intended to prevent an all-important arm of government from functioning. Now, let me liken it to a situation where the acting president wakes up in the morning only to be prevented by armed, bearing, dead men from entering his office. That also will stop him from performing his constitutional duties. So what happened in the National Assembly is a failed coup on Nigerians. Not only on the National Assembly, but on entire Nigerians, on entire lovers of democracy. Because if you go back to the military days, it's only the National Assembly, that legislative arm of government, that was emasculated. So when we return to democracy, the only symbol of democracy is National Assembly. Okay. Or the, or Mr. The Mr. Nene. Please, I, I, would, I, would, I would appreciate it if you can please answer my question. You've, already, you've, you've gone into the issue of the intention behind it, in your opinion. Can you now share with me what your thoughts are on the decision of the acting president to sack the former DG? Because some people are saying that, look, that decision is essentially a cure to the problem that you're referring to. See, if you look at the decision, well, if, I may say that the decision to sack DG of DSSS is a welcome development. But that is not enough. For me, the acting president would have conducted inquiry to know what transpired. But that's exactly what he did. No, but excuse me. The, 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 the seed was in the morning. In the afternoon, he was fired. Was it thorough? What happened? The, the, the DSSS were made to understand that we're acting on the above, order from the above. Then, who is that person that gave order from the above? These are the issues that must be laid bare. Okay, Mr. Nene, if you look at what... Now, what happens? What happens uh -huh. if a thorough investigation is conducted and Mr. Lawandara is escopated? Well, we're, we're actually about to get into that, Mr. Nene, but let's, let's look at uh, kind of the raw facts as we know them today. Uh, the, the DG of the DSS, the former DG who was sacked, comes into the office of the acting president. He's asked by the acting president who authorized... Uh, this uh, illegal invasion of the National Assembly, which in the view of the acting president was a threat to our constitutional order. And the DG of the DSS essentially responds that uh, nobody authorized him, that he had some information that he felt necessitated his own directive to his forces that they should be deployed to the Department of State Security. So the notion that the DG was ordered by somebody is refuted by the DG himself, the former DG himself. So why is it that you're premising your opinion on this notion that the DG of DSS was sent from somewhere when, in fact, he has already admitted that he sent those forces himself? You see, the question is this. Who does DG of DSS report to? The president. The president. Right. And in this case, we have the acting president, who by virtue of Section 145 and 146 of the 1999 Constitution, assumes the functions, the duties, the vestiges of the Mr. President. So, did Law and Daura report to the to, to acting president? Did they report to him? That means, somewhere, somehow, the office of the acting president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is being undermined. This is exactly the point that some people are saying. It's not the point. You say, let's let the, the sacking play. of the former I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about fast alone. I'm talking about the constitutional provision. We should be the uh, guiding principles. The acting, the DG of DSSS reports to the acting president. Correct. In this case, the president, acting president. Now, the, such reports was not made available to acting president, and he, on his own, on his own volition, deployed hooded men mm -hmm. that laid siege on the National Assembly. So the question we ask ourselves is, what is the intent of this action by the, the, uh, the former DG of DSSS? So that was why I said, I said the, the, the acting president acted swiftly 
But for me, that's my humble opinion. You would have waited for a thorough investigation into this matter. Because the, the, the DG of DSSS couldn't have wake up in the morning and take seat of the in National Assembly. Quickly, in your view, did, is, there, is there a thorough investigation needed to establish the fact that the former DG of the DSS was insubordinate to the acting president when he uh, single-handedly... Well, if he fired him for gross insubordination, it becomes a different thing. But if he fired him essentially for what transpired in the National Assembly without due or thorough investigation, for me, it was a bit hasty. Okay, we're going to take a very short break. When we do come back from this break, we're going to get into the details of the investigation that you've alluded to uh, in, this, in the report that has just been submitted. Uh, standing by with me is Mr. N Emmanuel Anene. We will be back in a moment to continue the conversation. Our viewers, please do stay with us. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Coming to you live from our Abuja studio. Standing by with me is a legal practitioner, Mr. Emmanuel Anene. And we've been talking about uh, the situation that had unfolded at the National Assembly in recent days and the role of the DSS in that uh, illegal invasion, as it were. Now, we've heard, we now know that the, uh, there was a directive given by Acting President Yemi Oshibajo to the Inspector General of Police, uh, Ibrahim Idris, uh, in the aftermath of what transpired at the National Assembly. Uh, we know that he was told to conduct an investigation and submit an interim report, and we understand that just last night that interim report was submitted. Uh, within the interim report, we're seeing that essentially uh, upon interrogation of the sacked Director General of the DSS, Lawal Dara, there were revelations that the sacked uh, DG had told uh, the investigators, those in the interrogation room, that the reason why he decided on his own to send his forces to the National Assembly that morning was, was because he had received an intelligence report that there was going to be an attempt to smuggle arms into the National Assembly and there was no communication with any other sister agency nor was there any communication with the acting president to this effect. Now, in view of that uh, submission, uh, what are your thoughts? You see, um, I don't understand why we're being fooled in this country. If you go to the National Assembly, it's not only the DSSS operatives that are in the National Assembly. You have police. You have members of the Civil Defense Corps. You have other security outfits in the National Assembly. So where were these security outfits when this siege was going on? That's the question. Where were these security operatives or that sister security operatives? The IPU or, 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 the, or the DPO in the National Assembly did not alert FCT Commission, did not alert anybody. And the siege lasted and they were watching like spectators. And then the, the same police that was in the National Assembly is being called upon to investigate the same thing. 